Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord and forget not all of his benefits. And that is right out of Psalm 103, verse 2. So I gave a little title to what I'm going to speak about and it is am I ashamed am I ashamed and so I'm going to share what I believe the Lord has given me to speak this morning and it uh, these are things that perhaps I've struggled with in my life as and even today I still struggle with some of these things but That's why I wanted to start with, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Because this is something that he teaches me daily, is to not forget, not forget all his benefits. So, sometimes I find myself struggling with who I am, what I do the way I am, maybe my personality, especially if I'm around people and I start comparing myself to others, then, then I start to struggle and because I may see uh, things that I think are better in somebody else that I don't have, and so I start to feel negative or I start to come down or uh, just I'm looking at the wrong things. And that's bad. And that's bad. But thank God that he comes around and he helps me. He helps me to get out of this, let's call it a pit or a hole. He helps me to get out of it. And, uh, and you know, he, what he always tells me is, where are your eyes? Put your eyes up. Put your eyes on Jesus. Uh, it's not good to be comparing uh, with other people. I mean, after all, I, I know... And from Scripture and all the studies we've had, uh, what the Word says and what we have heard, God gives each one talents. God gives each one um, uh, abilities, smarts, you name it. 
God, God gives each person uh, what he has and, and who he is and uh, his abilities. And so really, if I think about that, I have no right to boast about myself. I have no right to walk around like the little uh, roosters, you know, where they're really cocky. Uh, look at me or look at my colors or whatever. I have no right. This is all, it, it all comes from God. He has given it. And uh, I guess the first thing for us to, to do is to realize this, right? To realize it, to understand where it comes, and to uh, thank God for it and not compare ourselves with others. So this is something that I, uh, that I learn every day that I may struggle with uh, often. My earthly job is electrical engineering. I mean, this is what I do. This is what I've done uh, most of my life since I got out of college. And I remember that uh, when I was saved at 28 years old, I was already an electrical engineer. And I remember I turned to the uh, pastor and I turned to some of my friends who had been Christians and I said, well, what am I going to do now? You know, now... All of a sudden, uh, I know and I realize there's a God. There's a heaven and hell. There are angels all around. I didn't know this before. Yesterday, I didn't know this. Today, I know this. What am I going to do now? And they just calmly looked at me and said, what are you today? I said, I'm an electrical engineer. Well, that's what you're going to do. You're going to continue to be an electrical engineer, and you're going to, uh, you know, uh, get yourself uh, that job or stay in, in that job, and that's what you're going to do. And that was the answer. And today I am still working in, as a double E, as an electrical engineer. But then how about spiritually? I look, you know, I, I look at myself, I consider this, I say, well, how about spiritually? Earthly uh, wise, yes, I know what I am. And how about spiritually? And so I look at that and I say, okay, I'm a churchgoer. And I'm a helper. This is what I've been doing here at Penal for all these years. I'm a helper. I'm a churchgoer. Uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say is I'm nothing great, okay? I am not the evangelist. I am not the preacher. I am not the healing, uh, you know, like Benny Hinn. I'm not the healing uh, evangelist, right? You know, I am a simple churchgoer and a helper. So back to that title, am I ashamed? Okay, am I ashamed? Am I ashamed of who I am, what I do, where I'm at? Am I ashamed? Am I aspiring to be more? Do I want to be more, greater? Am I not happy with where I'm at, what he has done for me, what he has uh, given me, the abilities that he's given me? So I think about these things. What if... I'm a young person right now, and, and we know we have plenty, plenty of young people around. What if I don't know what he wants me to do or what he wants me to be? And I'm sure I remember when I was younger, I had that question. I had no idea. I remember walking around asking people, you know, what do I do? And they would look at me and say, well, you should know what you want to do. Why are you asking me? But I remember I, had, I didn't know which way to go, left, right, forward, back. I fell into the engineering school just, I don't know, by the grace of God. But I thought about different things you could do here on earth. You could be an engineer, a nurse. You could be a homemaker, a mechanic working in cars, big, big trucks, firefighter, a doctor. My gosh, you could be Trump, a president. So many different things you could be, young people. But I'm starting to understand and realize that whatever I get into, whatever I do, there's something else that I must do. So if I'm a young person today, whatever my, I, I choose for my career, whatever it might be, and, you know, God's going to lead you and guide you. Don't worry. But whatever it is that, you, that you're going to go for, whatever you got your mind set on, 
there's something else you've got to do. And it is to know him. To know Jesus, to know God. And so I asked the question, what is, what is my purpose in life? And, I, and I've been thinking about this here lately. What is my purpose in life? What is my purpose in life? And you as a young person can ask this to yourself. And I believe your main purpose is to know him. Now, I said, is this biblical? I know it is, but I need to find some scriptures. John 17, 3, Jesus was talking. He says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee. The only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is Jesus talking. This is not even one of the disciples. They, they heard Jesus say this. They wrote it down. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. John 4, 25, 26, when he was with the woman, he said, uh, I'm sorry, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus looked at her and declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Wow. She got a one-to-one -one experience knowing the Christ. So, the main purpose in life, to know Him. I think about Enoch. It's interesting when I, uh, when I'm going to, when I read some of these scriptures, uh, the Bible doesn't really tell us his profession. The Bible didn't really tell us what he was good at. The Bible doesn't mention if he was a potato farmer, a, you know, had animals. Uh, I mean, the things they did back then, who knows? More than likely he was a farmer of some sort. But anyway, the Bible doesn't mention that. But what does the Bible mention? Well, let's see. In Genesis 5, 21, 24, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. I didn't realize he walked with God that many years, but it says he walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. To me, I don't know what you think, but to me, Enoch knew God. I mean, that, to me, that's what it means. When, if, I, if he walked with God, that means he knows God. He, know, he, come, he came, came to know God. He was walking with God. He came to know him. And, uh, and that is his testimony. But well, wait, there's more. In Hebrew 11.5, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So I know that he walked with God. I know that he pleased God. And I know that he knew God. It's just A, B, C, one, two, three. So, to recap, growing up, I wasn't a Christian since I was a little kid. I was a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 28 years old. But So, growing up, I've heard what the world says. I've heard what most people around say. Uh, get your education. Uh, get a good degree. Get a good job because you need to be successful. And uh, you need to have stuff, and, you need, and you're going to start buying stuff because you're going to have, you're going to be surrounded with stuff, and this is what normal every day and what we hear from the world, not here in church, of course, 
but everywhere else. But what does God say about that? What does God say about that? Obviously, that's not his, that's not his word. That's not his preaching. I want to share a little bit, a little testimony of, of something that I've been going through in the last years, actually. But, but it's one thing. It's interesting how the Lord is dealing with me. You know, I'm striving to learn how to walk with him. I'm striving to reach out and know him as much as I can. Uh, and, and that's what I want, like Enoch, okay? Um, but in the last few years, one thing that's come across that's important is, and I remember the young man that was standing here from Argentina not too long ago, uh, Eliasar. And I don't know if you remember, when he was standing here, one of the things he said, <laughs> what's important, what's important, what's important? And he repeated it like three times, obedience, obedience, obedience. And so I kind of think that Enoch was probably pretty good at obedience. He had 300 years to practice. But I got the feeling that he was pretty good at obedience. Uh, he walked with God. Uh, God was pleased with him. He, he probably learned how to listen and obey pretty good. But this is something that God is working with me on, and it's difficult for me. It's very difficult. But here's, how he's, here, here's one of the ways he's doing it. And this started years ago. I, I love Arby's, the restaurant. A beef and cheddar, potato cakes, and lemonade. I love it. I'm, I can do that every time I go. But do you know that when I, uh, at some point in my life at Arby's, uh, I started to feel like I would walk in, I'd see somebody sitting there on a booth by themselves, and I just started to get this impression, go tell them Jesus loves them. And, and you know, something as simple as that, come on, just do it. Big deal. Nope, it's not going to kill you. Just do it, right? Uh-uh. I don't know why that was so hard for me, but it was... It was like pulling teeth. Uh, I just dreaded it. My stomach tightened up. Um, I said, why, 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 why is this? Is this God? Is this not God? No, maybe it's not God. Maybe it's just my imagination. I, and, and sometimes I would do it, and sometimes I wouldn't. But I tell you, it was terrible. It was terrible. Well, this has been years, okay? Just the other day, I had this urge to go to Arby's. I was at work. It was noon. I had my lunch, but I said, I'm going to leave that lunch. There's leftovers. I'm going to go to Arby's. I'm happy I'm going to Arby's. I park, and as I'm turning the car off, I hear, there it is again. And I look real quick to see, is there somebody sitting on the booth right there at the window? You can see them, you know, through the window. There was two men. I said, okay, whew. I think I'm okay today. But I said, okay, I know, Lord, I know, okay, I know. I'm not going to fail this time if it happens. But there's only two men there. So I get out. I order my stuff. I sit down. The two men have left. And, all, and w w taking my, my bites and all this, I look up, and there's a woman. She's a wait waitress. And she's cleaning this, and she's wiping the table, and, and that's the one. I said, okay, I'm not going to back and forth. And, excuse me. Excuse me, and she's got a mask, and I got my mask. I, said, I just had to tell you, you know, Jesus loves you. She, oh, thank you so much. I said, I've been going through some hard times lately. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm still going through some hard times. Really? Yeah. I said, oh, my gosh. Well, I, like I said, I just want to tell you again. I just had to tell you, Jesus loves you. Thank you. Thank you. And she walked off. Real simple. I look at that and I say, this is simple. Uh, what's the problem? Why have I struggled so, so many years? So really, partly I'm ashamed for, for, for not being able to obey quicker or, you know, not getting it right the first time. But, you know, thank God for his patience. Thank God that he doesn't quit. 
you know, thank God that he's going to insist and he's going to teach that son, that daughter, this is what I, I want you to do. It doesn't matter if you got Benny Hinn preaching to thousands and millions. If this is for you and, 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 and this is what I got for you, uh, be happy and, and, and do what I'm asking you. To, that little thing, just do that little thing. Don't worry about the rest of the world. And this is what I'm learning. And this is, and this is what uh, the Lord is, is teaching me. It's a simple thing, but, it, but since he is asking, it's a big deal. Okay. Be happy with your situation. Okay, going back to the title, Am I Ashamed? Another learning experience. Be happy with your situation, Al. Be happy with your situation. Elena, David. Jonathan, be happy with your situation. Hebrews 13, 5, look what it says. Be content with what you have. The Bible says, be content with what you have in Hebrews 13, 5. Why does it say that? Why does God say that to us? I mean, some of us have more, some of us have less. Um, but he says, be content with what you have. And it started to come clear to me. And the reason is because he's telling us, God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And it took me a while, but once I put two and two together, I started to realize the reason he's saying that is not because I've got a car or a house or, or shoes, or, or, or I'm healthy physically. Not so much that, but because he's telling me what you have inside is a treasure. You may not know it, you may not realize it, but what you have inside is better than gold, better than silver, better than diamonds. His name is Jesus. It says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me. And now, real quick, I'm going to act out two scenarios because I'm going to make a little point. But I'm going to act out two scenarios, an evangelist, and a homeless man. Oh, I see so many people here tonight. I thank you for coming tonight to hear the word of the Lord. And as John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life life and I say to you tonight if God is calling you come up front answer the call come up front and give your heart to the Lord give your heart to Jesus Christ tonight and he will save you he will pardon you all of your sins and he will fill you with the Holy Spirit come up come up Number two, Life is so terrible. Ah, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm so miserable. Ah, why, why, why? Oh, you stinking white cat with stripes. Oh, oh, oh. It's not your fault. 
that I'm such a miserable man. Oh, God, my bad decisions. Oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive my sins. Wash me, O oh Lord, and cleanse me. Receive me, I pray, in Jesus' name. And the point is, I read a little article one day, years ago, I couldn't find it, I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. And there was a, a person that was uh, ar making the argument, you know, who is really important in God's eyes? Who is, uh, let's see, who, who is doing the right thing? Who is important? What is valuable in the eyes of God? And he gave the story of, of like an evangelist, okay, who is out preaching around the world, uh, uh, you know, say, quote, saving hundreds of thousands of people. His name is known. He's known across the world. That's a pretty important person. And then the homeless who nobody knows, right, uh, insignificant homeless who is, you know, poor, has no, doesn't affect anybody, right, can influence, doesn't have any influence, doesn't have power, doesn't have money, doesn't have anything. So I think if we look at that, you know, most people would say that person is, is doing more, doing better, uh, reaching more people. He, he, God is going to be happy with that one. But this other one here, well, he might go to hell. And I remember that article was making the argument, no, no, that's not the way it is. And he was saying, based on this scripture, to whom much is given, from him much will be required. That's Luke 12, 48. To whom much is given, much will be required. Well, if God gave this evangelist the talent to study, to preach, the education, the brain, Okay, the ability, the anointing to do everything that he does traveling around the world, that's God's gift to that person. And if he uses it, he's going to be blessed. God is going to be pleased, right? This homeless man, if God didn't give him the things he gave him, perhaps he gave him one talent, one little beady thing, and he displayed it by holding that wrath. He was going to kick that cat and just obliterate him, right? But he withheld for just a second, and he said, no, I'm not going to hurt you. Just a cat. And then he turned and repented, looked up to God and repented. How wonderful that is. How pleased God would be. Because he used the, the one little talent he had, and he's well. He's doing good. And this man used the ten talents that he's got. He's doing well. But one's not better than the other. I remember that little story, and I'll never forget it. So I, I'll end with, again, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for your great love, your great patience. For your love is greater than anything. Thank you, Lord, that, that in the Bible... You give us these stories that cause us to look and to read and to think about them and then maybe desire, I want to be like that one. I want to do what that one did. And, you, and through these stories, you give us maybe hunger and thirst and you cause us to desire these things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Though I don't see you, though... I might not feel you. 
Thank you for that word. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Thank you for all your love and all your blessings. I pray today in the name of Jesus.